accurate. What prevents Luke from killing Vader and turning to the dark side? Um, well, I actually, like, I wrote down the good side of the Force, question mark. <laughs> um, but I think more it was just they had that sort of connection. It was kind of like, no, I'm not going to kill you. You're not going to kill me. Like, think about it. I'm your son. Hmm. Mess with me. Like, I don't I don't know. It's just, it's, it's a dangerous territory when it comes between, uh, well, I normally start that by saying it's a dangerous territory telling other parents how to parent their kid or telling parents how to parent their kid. I feel like it's kind of the same situation here. Dangerous territory trying to get a father and son to kill each other. Mm. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What about you, Daryl? I think it's. What prevents him is ultimately the fact that his end goal is redemption. Yeah. So True. Go pretty much it. everybody <laughs> wants him to kill Vader. Like uh, Palpatine wants him to kill Vader so that he will turn to the dark side. I didn't and, think about that. That's totally true. Apprentice. Everyone wants him to kill Vader. Yoda and Obi Wan want him to kill Vader. <laughs> right. I'm sure all the rebels want him to kill Vader. Like yes, everybody wants likely. him to kill Vader. Yeah. And so it's the fact that He's not, I mean, he does, he's aligned with the rebels, obviously. Like, right. he believes that the rebels are good and the Empire is bad. Right. But his ultimate goal is not to kill Vader. His mm. ultimate goal is to redeem his father. Right. And so I think yeah. that's why he doesn't do it, because even amidst all of this pressure from everybody, mm. he's holding true to what he's trying to do. Yeah. So... I think, that's, I think that's good answer. Yeah, I think that's a really good answer. Woof. I'm gonna give some. I'm gonna give some additional backing to why I think that that's the right answer. Really, um, I think what really truly prevents Luke from killing Vader is empathy. Yeah. Um, we see that he cuts off his father's hand, and I think most people probably know this, but that's the same hand that Vader cut off of Luke in The Empire Strikes Back. So you see someone who is letting is letting the dark side overtake them, starting to let the dark side overtake them as he just hacks away at Vader, cuts off his hand, and then he sees at that moment that Vader is not what Obi-Wan claimed. Because what Obi-Wan claimed was that Vader was, was all machine. Yeah. And in that moment, he goes, wait a minute, I'm not that much different than him. Yeah. We both don't have a hand. We both have mechanical hands. The same hand of ours is mechanical. Yeah. And I think that's where he sees that there's a man underneath that armor. And not only that, but it's my father. And that empathy is what prevents fear and anger and hatred from taking over. He knows what Vader is feeling. He's able to put himself in Vader's shoes, so to speak. Um, I think it all comes down to empathy. I think that's the mo one of the most powerful things when you see divided opinions or you see people who are doing things in vastly different ways, right? Empathy is one of the biggest ways to get those people to come together. This is all bringing one word into my head right now. What's that? Martha. <laughs> <laughs> we have to bring that up in every every single podcast. We have to bring it up just in case Tim Posada is listening. <laughs> yeah, no, well, oh, well but, that, but that is the point, right? Yeah, like, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. We can take the view of Yoda, which is to say we must wipe out what we don't agree with, or or even Obi Wan Kenobi. We must like just completely obliterate whatever we don't agree with. Yeah. Or we can take the view, like Luke does, that actually no, I have to understand where that person is coming from. I have to understand them. I have to empathize for them, or else I'll never really truly redeem them. And I and I and I then take a place where I have to wipe them out. So I think it's a really, really powerful met message that's weaved throughout. Do you want? Do you want to take like two seconds just to brag about your son? <laughs> to brag about my son? Yeah, because he basically got an award oh, for yeah. being Luke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I'll brag about my son. Yeah. Earlier this morning, my son, who is in TK, which is a year before kindergarten, so he's four years old, he won um, student of the month for his class. Mm-hmm for being caring yeah so and i mean he's four so i don't know that he totally understands empathy it's not like he has the capacity to put himself in somebody else's shoes yeah but he genuinely does have a capacity to care about people beyond himself 
Yeah, absolutely. And that speaks to so you can tell him you can tell him that Jay said he's just like a little Luke. Okay. <laughs> there you go. He's gonna go. Who's Luke? <laughs> but, no, he knows who Luke. Okay, is. he knows who Luke is. Yeah. Just tell him. Tell him. Okay, so we're. Oh my gosh, my heart. That's <laughs> <laughs> it is awesome. And, and Daryl showed me a little picture of him with his award too, which is which is super cool. Um, Congratulations. Any thoughts? Any last thoughts on that? I know Garrett. I asked you first. Any other thoughts on like how empathy is a part of that, or like how this story relates, how Luke's transformation relates to that? Like, I didn't even think about it until you said it, but now I'm like, oh my gosh. So thank you. Like now I can totally see it now that it's been put in front of my face. But uh, the first thing that I actually thought of was when Yoda told him to go and like see his fear or whatever that was in the Dagobah system. Mm -hmm. Uh, And then he cuts off Darth Vader's head, but it's his head in the helmet. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like that's the first thing I thought of. Cause I didn't even think about cutting off a hand and then, Oh my gosh, like the empathy, that whole thing. Um, them relating to each other on that level. And then like him seeing that kind of come to fruition from what he saw when Yoda told him to go look at his fear. So, Sorry, now it's just getting to the point where I'm talking because I'm trying to understand it. And I know oh, that's exactly what we do. I'm the smartest you <laughs> yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. So. Well, that's what we do too. <laughs> well, and this and this is just basically so just to just to to kind of press rewind for a second on the, on the podcast. This is where I think a lot of people get the object like or what I believe to be absolute truth. How most people apply it incorrectly is that they don't apply it with empathy. Mm. So if you apply what you believe to be absolute truth without empathy, without understanding where the other people are coming from, you will almost by definition come down on them from a morality perspective instead of understanding where they're coming from. Because if you understood where they were coming from, you might realize that you're susceptible to maybe some of the same things that you're quote unquote accusing them for. And and so I think that this movie shows a pretty powerful example of if if you, like Luke does, say, no, I'm going to understand. I do believe that people need to be redeemed. That is my absolute truth. But I don't believe they can be redeemed without empathy being a core part of what I do. Then you really open yourself up to the negativity of an Obi-Wan or a Yoda mm-hmm. with how they're trying to come down on people that should be redeemed and can be redeemed and are redeemed. <laughs>